our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this special CUBE Conversation here at the Palo Alto CUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We're here with Moritz Mann, who's the head of the product management team at Open Systems AG. Great to see you again, thanks for coming in. Hey John, thanks for having me. So last time we spoke, you had your event in Las Vegas, you guys are launching, you have a new headquarters here in Silicon Valley, opened up this past spring, congratulations. Thank you, yeah, it's a great, great uh, venue to start in, and, and uh, we set foot on the Silicon Valley ground, so to make our way to- I know you've been super busy uh, with, with the new building and rolling out and expanding heavily here in the Valley, but you guys are in the hottest area that we're covering, security, cloud security, on-premise security, the combination of both, has been the number one conversation pretty much in the cloud world right now, obviously besides the normal you know, cloud native, cloud IT, hybrid versus multi-cloud, obviously that continues to, to be the discussion. I think there's no more debate around multi-cloud and hybrid. Public cloud's great, people are going to still keep their enterprises. But the security equation still is changing, this new requirements, what's the latest that you guys are seeing with respect to security? Yeah, so John, what we see is actually that, 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 that cloud adoption ha um, happens at different speeds. So you have usually the infrastructure as a service adoption which happens in a quite controlled way because it, there's a lift and shift. You have your old data center, you, you take it and you transfer it into Azure, AWS or GCP. Um, but then there's also uncontrolled adoption which is in the SaaS space and I think this is where a lot of data risk uh, occur, especially in the wake of GDPR, and where we see that this, this adoption happens more in a sometimes controlled, but sometimes in a very uncontrolled way. Explain the, the uncontrolled and controlled expansion of, of how security and multi-cloud and cloud is going, because this is interesting. Controlled means this, this plans to do stuff. Uncontrolled means it's just by other forces. Explain uncontrolled versus controlled specifically. Yeah, so, so controlled specifically means the IT team takes has a project plan and takes servers and workloads and moves them in a controlled fashion or in a dedicated project to the cloud. But what happened in, in the business world and business IT is actually that users share content at any time with any device at any at any time and, and in, in all locations. So this is called the mobile enterprise and the cloud-first enterprise. So it means that the, the classical security parameter and the controls in that are bypassed actually by the path of least resistance or the shortest path available. And this is the classic case. People use Dropbox for some you know personal things. They're at home, they're at work, API-based software. Exactly. That's what you're getting at in the uncontrolled exactly, way. Exactly, yeah. And the issue with this is that that the data that has been like contained in, in, in parameters where you know, as it sees where your data is, uh, this has been deployed to many edge devices, to many mobile devices, and it's get it gets uh, shared un, in an uncontrolled way. Well, I got a couple talk tracks I'd like to drill down on that because I think this is the trend we're seeing. APIs dominant, the perimeter on the infrastructure has gone away, and it's only getting bigger and larger. You got IoT and yeah. IoT Edge, just and, and the networks are controlled and also owned by different people. So the packets are moving on, it's crazy. So and that's the reality. First talk track is the security challenge. What is the security challenge and how does a customer figure out what to do from an architectural standpoint when they're dealing with hybrid and multi-cloud? So first of all, um, customers or we see enterprises try, uh, need to rethink their infrastructure-centric infrastructure view of uh, the architecture. So the architecture that had been built around data centers needs to become hybrid and multi-cloud aware. So that means they need to define a new way of a parameter which is in cloud, but also in the uh, covering the, the still the old, so to say, legacy hybrid data center setup, which has the data still in the old data center. And at the same time, they need to open up and become the, a cloud themselves, so to say, and but still draw a parameter around their data and their users and, not, and their applications and not so much anymore around the physical infrastructure. So taking, changing their view of what a security product is, is that really what you're getting at? Yeah, so the issue is with the product point solution was that they fixed uh, a certain par part of, of, of a tactile issue. So if you take a firewall in itself, a firewall back then, it, it was like a 
entry door to a big building, yeah. you could, could decide who comes out, who goes in. Now, if the, 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 the kind of the walls of the building are vanishing or are more uh, morphic, uh, you need to come up with a more integrated uh, concept. So having these stacked appliances and stacked security solutions, trying to work together and chain them doesn't work anymore. So we think and we see that. Why is that? Why doesn't it work? Because in the end, it's 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 hardly uh, to to operate them. Uh, each of those point solutions have their own uh, end of life. They have their own life cycle. They have their own APIs. They have their own TCO. Uh, so all that needs to be covered. And then there's the human aspect where you have the knowledge pools around those technologies. So as an enterprise, you have to content to continuously keep the very scarce security experts to maintain a content to continuously depreciating assets running, right? Yeah, and they're also, ne they weren't built for tying into a holistic kind of uh, exactly. dashboard or platform. Yeah, what we see is that uh, that enterprises now realize we have data centers and it's, it's a now an accepted uh, reality that you can abstract it with the cloud. So you have, uh, you don't own your own servers and buildings anymore, so you have an OPEX model to subscribe to cloud services. And we think that this has to happen sec to security too. So shift from CapEx to OPEX, and uh, the same way also for operational matters. Security as a service is a great business model. I want to ask you on that front, you mentioned mobile users. How do you secure the mobile users when they use cloud collaboration? Because this is really what users expect and they want. How do you secure it? So we secure it by, by actually uh, monitoring the data where it actually gravitates, and this is usually in the cloud. So we enforce the data um, that is in transit through uh, proxies and gateways towards the cloud from the endpoint devices, but also then looking via APIs in the cloud themselves to look for threats, data leakage, and also sandbox certain uh, activities that happen there. All right, the next talk track I want to get into is the expansion to hybrid and multi-cloud. Something that you guys do as, uh, from a product standpoint, solution for your customers, but in general, this is an industry conversation as well. How, how do you look at this from a software standpoint? Because you know, we've heard Pat Gelsinger at VMware talk about software-defined data center, SDN, everything's now software-based. You talk about the perimeter goes away. You guys are kind of bringing up a different approach as a software perimeter. Yeah. What, is, what is the challenge for expanding to multi-cloud and hybrid cloud? So, so the, the challenge for an enterprise and customers we talk to is that they have to run their old business. Um, Gartner once called it bimodal business. And, and it's still adopting not one cloud, but we see in our surveys, and this is also what market research confirms, is that customers end up with two to three cloud vendors. So there will, will be one or two platforms that will be uh, primary to their major majority of applications and data gravity but they will end up and become much more flexible with uh, running AWS, their old data center, but also GCP and Azure or Alibaba Cloud even side by side, right? To cover the different speeds at what their own enterprise runs at. So I got to ask you about cloud native, because one of the things that you're bringing up that just jumps in my head, I, wanna, I got to ask because this is uh, what I see as a potential challenge, it might be a current challenge, is when you have Kubernetes growing at such a rapid rate, you see the level of services coming online at a much higher rate. So, okay, people, mobile users are using the drop boxes, the boxes, and using all these API services, but that's just, those are apps. Yeah. There's a, hundreds and thousands of microservices being stood up and torn down in there. You guys are taking, I think, an approach of putting a perimeter, software perimeters around these kinds of things, but they get turned on and off. How do you know what's clean? Because it's, it's all done automatically. So, this is becoming a challenge. So, is this what you guys mean when you say software perimeter that you guys can just put security around things at any time? Is that, explain this dynamic, because yeah, it's so, a big deal. So if you talk about the service mesh, so really meshing cloud native, native functions, I think it's still in a phase where it's, I, I would say cha chaotic when you have specific projects that are being ramped up, ramped down. So we draw a perimeter in that specific context. So let's say you have, you're ramping up a lot of cloud native function AWS, we can build a perimeter around this kind of containment and look, especially for threats in the activity logs of the different Kubernetes containers. But uh, from, a, from a design perspective, this needs to be uh, um, 
we need to think ahead of the future because if you look at Microsoft uh, and AWS strategy, those containers will eventually move also back to the edge. Um, so yeah. we are pre in preparing that uh, to, to support those models will also cover, bring the, these functions closer back again to the edge. And we call that not any longer the WAN edge, but it will become a cloud edge, edge actually. Mm -hmm. So it's not an extension of the LAN that comes to the data. It's actually the data and the applications coming back to the user and much closer. Yeah, I mean, in that case, you can define the on-premises environment as an edge, big edge, because this is all about moving workloads and yeah. data around. This is what the new normal is. Yeah. So, I go, okay, I got to ask you the next question, which is, okay, if that's true, that means that Kubernetes becomes a critical part of all this and containers. Yes. How do you guys play with that at all? So we play with this by, by actually looking at data coming from that. At the moment we are looking at this from a, from a data transit perspective, uh, we, but we will further more integrate for into the, their AT APIs and actually become part of the CICD process mm -hmm. um, that, that will be then actually be become a security function yeah. in the approval and rolling out a canary to a certain service mesh and we can say, well, this is safe or this is unsafe. This is, I think, the eventual goal to, to get there. But, uh, but for now, it's, it's really about tracking the logs of all each of those containers and actually having a parameter and segmentation around the service mesh cloud, so to say. I think you guys got a good thing going on when you talk about this new concept that's of software-defined perimeter. Because it's, you can almost map that to anything. Everything, everything has its own little perimeter. Yeah. Workload could be moving around, still it needs to be secure. So I got to ask you on the next talk track because this leads into hybrid cloud. This is the hottest topic. Hybrid cloud to me is the same as multi-cloud, just kind of get it together. A little bit different, but hybrid cloud means you're operating both on premises yeah. and in the cloud. This is becoming a challenge. Most C CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers, don't want to fork their teams and have multiple people coding different stacks. They don't want the vendor lock-in, and so you're seeing a lot of people pulling back on premises, building their own stacks, deploying in the cloud and having a, 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 a seamless operation. What is your definition of hybrid? Where do you see hybrid going? And how important is it to have a hybrid strategy? So I think the key success factors of a hybrid strategy is that standardization is a big topic. So we think that a service platform that to secure that, like the SD-WAN secure service platform we, we built, needs to be standardized on operational level, but also from a, a baseline security and detection level. And this means that if you run and create your own workloads on-prem, uh, you need to have the same security and standard security and deployment standard for the cloud and have the seamless uh, security perimeter and level of security no matter where these, these deployments are. And the second factor of this is actually how to ensure a secure data transfer between those different workloads. And this is where SD-WAN comes into play, which acts as a fabric um, uh, together with, uh, with a WAN backbone uh, where we connect all those pieces together in a uh, secure fashion. Well, it's great to have you on theCUBE and sharing your insight on the industry. Let's get into your company, Open Systems. You guys provide an integrated solution um, for DevOps and, and secure service and security platform. Take a minute to talk about the innovations that you guys are doing, because you guys talk a lot about CASB, talk a lot about um, integrated SD-WAN, um, but first define what CASB is for the audience that doesn't know what CASB is. It's an acronym, C-A-S-B. Um, it's kicked around all in the security conversation. So if you're new to security, uh, it's an acronym that you should pay attention to. So define CASB and talk about your solution. Um, so uh, CASB is in a, uh, the abbreviation means Cloud Access Security Broker. So it, it's actually becoming this uh, centralized orchestrator that that allows and defines access based on a on a trust level. So saying, um, first of all, it's between networks saying. I have a mobile workforce accessing SaaS or IS applications. CASB is in the middle to provide security and visibility about where is my data moving, where is my, do, where do I have exposure of uh, of a GDPR compliance or PCI or HIPAA risks, and where is it exposed to, uh, which is a big deal, um, and, and it, it's kind of the lowest level to start with. But then it goes further by uh, we can use the CASB to actually pull in data that. Um, that is about IS workloads and to, uh, to identify data that's being addressed and stored. So are there any 
incidentally shared uh, data uh, artifacts that are actually critical to the business and are they shared with external resources. And then going one step further, where we then have a complete zero trust access model where we say we know exactly who can talk to which application at any time uh, and give access to. But as everything, this needs to be uh, is in embedded in an evolution. And the benefit ultimately goes to the SaaS applications to have security built in. That's the from first day thing one. that you need to tackle nowadays. It's get your SaaS uh, cl cloud security <laughs> uh, or policy yeah. enforced, uh, and but without disrupting service uh, and and business, and to actually em uh, empower business and not to block and keep out the business or keep I mean the it's a classic application developer challenge which is they love to code, they love to build applications and what Cloud did with DevOps was abstracted away the infrastructure so that they didn't have to do all this configuration just to write apps. You guys are enabling that for security. Exactly, yeah, so it, coming back to this uh, multi-point product cloud which, which is not keeping yeah. up anymore with the current reality and, and needs of a business, so we took the approach and, and compared DevOps with a great service platform. So we have engineers building the platform, this integrated security service platform, which provides SD-WAN, managed detection response, and CASPI services in one, under one platform, which is tightly integrated. But in the, in the customer focus that we provide them an OPEX model, which is pretty pr very predictable, very transparent in their security posture, and make that re uh, a scalable platform to operate and expand their business on. And that's great, congratulations. I want to go back for the final point here to round up the interview. Um, for the IT folks watching or um, the folks who have to implement multi-cloud and hybrid cloud, they're sitting there, it could be a cloud architect, it could be an IT operations or an IT pro, they think multi-cloud and hybrid cloud, this is the environment they have to get their arms around. Yeah. How, what should they be thinking about around multi-cloud and hybrid cloud? What is, is it real? What's the reality now? What should they be considering for evaluation? What are some of the key things that, that should be on their mind when they're dealing with hybrid cloud and all the opportunity around it? So I think there, there are like four key pieces. One is um, they think they st have to start to think strategic. So what is a platform and a partner that helps them to plan ahead for the next three to five years in a way that they can really focus on what their business needs are. This is the scalability aspect. The secondly, it's uh, do, we, do I have a network and security uh, architecture that allows me to grow confidently and, and go down different venues to, to actually adopt multi-clouds without worrying about the security implications behind it too much uh, and, and to implement that. And third is have this baseline and have this standardized security uh, posture around wherever the data is moving being at mobiles, being at uh, SaaS, or being at uh, on-prem and in-cloud uh, workloads. And the fourth piece is, ag again, um, really thinking of where do I spend most of my time, uh, where do I create, create value um, by, by def defining this framework so it really can create a benefit and value uh, for the enterprise, because if you do it not right, you're not right, you will have, a, we, uh, you will end up with a, an architecture that will break the business and not accelerate it. Mertz Mann, head of product at Open Systems here inside the Cube Studios. Um, great job, you must love your job, you got the keys. A lot of pressure. Security, of being a product, <laughs> head of product for a security company is yeah. a lot of pressure. Uh, before we wrap up, just give a quick plug for the company. You guys hiring, you guys have a new office space here in Redwood City, looks beautiful. Give a quick share, a quick plug for the company. Yeah, so Open Systems is a great company to work with. Uh, we are expanding in the US uh, and also EMEA uh, with, with, uh, with, with all the workforce, so we are hiring. So go on our, our website, we have a lot of open positions, uh, exciting challenges in a growth-oriented workspace. And, and yeah, I, as you said, uh, security at the moment is one of the hottest areas to be in, especially with all the fundamental changes happening in the enterprise and architecture, IT landscape. So yeah. And yeah. cloud security specifically, not just endpoint, the normal stuff that people are used to, cloud exactly. security is hot as hot as, as could be right now. Yeah. Mertz, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for John. the insights. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We're here in Palo Alto with Morris Mann, who's the head of product management for Open Systems. Thanks for watching. <laughs>